गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल वेलकम टू इमेज ग्राफिक्स वेबिनार टूडेज टॉपिक इज थ्री डी मॉडलिंग एंड डिटेलिंग बाई एस सी जी सॉफ्टवेयर सो दिस विल गोइंग टू हेल्प यू फॉर योर प्रेशर वेसल स्टोरेज टैंक हीट एक्सचेंज डिजाइन सो डिटेलिंग ऑफ दैट ड्रॉइंग विल गोइंग टू गिव यू good confident and this software will going to help you a lot so today uh, we have a presenter my name is fauzan uh, i take care for all the analysis solutions along with me i have uh, mr ahmed hegazi who will be uh, going to present today he is a developer of the seg software so he will be conducting the session so uh, regarding ahmed he is basically a mechanical engineer by profession is having more than 13 years of experience in the oil and gas industry so he is into design of designing of the pressure vessel storage tanks and heat exchangers he is having the strong knowledge on the asme and api codes and he is also an autodesk inventor certified professional okay so he will be uh, taking care of the session today so just before uh, moving on to the session i would like to highlight about image graphics okay so image graphics uh, uh, is founded in 1996 headquartered in the dubai okay and we have a group of companies which is into the we have a engineering services division we have software solutions we have enterprise solutions so we have different uh, group of companies over here and we have a uh, number of employees we have 120 plus and growing and this is the website www.image-graphics.com so you will find lots of technical contents and all the blogs and newsletters on our website and the latest webinar details also you will be able to find it on our website so we have a few of the uh, locations uh, in india our headquarter office is in chennai and then we have some branch offices in delhi mumbai then we have a office in uae okay Uh, which is in dubai and abu dhabi so this was all about a uh, small introduction about the image graphics i'll just hand over the session to mr ahmed who will be uh, taking uh, from now okay ahmed over to you okay uh, thanks fauzan for your presentation uh, this is ahmed higazi uh, seg owner today inshallah we will present one of the most important 3d modeling and detailing software for static equipment in the world it's a static equipment generator software so let's know more about seg at the beginning let's ask what is seg software it's an engineering application software it's a design automation tool and a productivity tool for modeling and drafting work by using seg software you can generate the 3d digital prototype and you can generate the 2d drawings for your equipment before manufacturing you can test your equipment even it was a pressure vessel power storage tank slug catcher and other before the process of manufacturing and creating the application drawings to detect if there is a problem like clashes or something like that before start on the second step you can generate the bill of material for you will for uh, all of your project easily by using sdg software by using this software you can save up 80% from your time and money is that right is that real yes it's real here we make a comparison for a real project uh, of a pressure vessel this pressure vessel we made it with uh, different options we uh, create uh, those drawings using uh, the 2d autocad software and it's consumed around 50 hours to generate the ga drawings and detailed drawings bill of material for this equipment and by using a cad software like cad works autodesk inventor catia pro engineer any other software it takes around 35 hours to generate the 3d model and to the fabrication drawings but in case of using seg software plus cad software like disk inventor we generate it in 8 hours only 8 hours 
all of those drawings and the loop material. So you can imagine how you can save a time. You can compare between eight hours and 50 hours by using AutoCAD the traditional way. So you can compare that with a large scale and larger projects. So you can imagine how you can save from time and money by using SEG software. By using SEG software, you can generate many types of equipments under one umbrella. You can generate horizontal, vertical, and slope depression results by using SEG. You can generate the same for heat exchangers. You can generate storage tanks with a fixed roof. You can generate larger towers and columns with a multi-sectional sections and different diameters. You can generate slug catchers and piping. No existing software in the world make all of those equipments under one umbrella and one module. Those are some, some samples for real projects by SEG software. Here, as you can figure, it's a, a storage tank with textured roof, and you can figure the arrangement of plates, the uh, roof arrangement and bottom arrangement, annular plates, spiral stairs, manway, and anchor chairs. Here for pressure vessels, small pressure vessels like air receivers, and complicated uh, pressure vessels. And you can figure that you can make a complicated configuration like, uh, like this one with uh, valves and, uh, and vibing and special shapes like in the cruisers. You can do all of that easily by using SDG software. The same for heat exchangers. You can make many types of heat exchangers by using SDG software and you can all of us know how it's complicated to make a heat exchanger, but by using SDG, it's too easy to do that. In SEG, you will deal with different levels. The first level is a project level. In this level, you will define uh, uh, some fields like the project name, client name, the owner, the location, manufacturer. All of that will appear on your drawing after creation of the draw. The second level is the equipment level. In this level, you will define the design data of the equipment, like uh, the construction code, design pressure, design temperature, corrosion allowance, wind, and seismic. And you have the ability to add more design conditions. And you have the ability to move or to remove or edit the current uh, data. One more thing regarding to the vessel, which is the vessel setting. In the vessel setting, you can define the position of the vessel. You can make it a you can make your vessel is a horizontal, vertical, or sloped. You can change the arrangement of the assembly. If you wanted to make it start from left to right, right to left top to bottom, bottom to top. You can select your units. You can make it in millimeter or inches. And you can change the delivered blade dimensions. And this uh, one is a uh, most important factor for the calculating of the circumference of the shell. Because SEG will detect automatically if the delivered blade dimensions will cover the circumference length of the shell or not. Here for the storage tanks module, you can generate radial roof, arrangement blade roof, doom roofs, bottom plates, sloped inside or, is, uh, or outside, and flat bottom. You can create annular plates, and you can generate spiral stairs, clean out doors, and manuals. And there is a special tool for roof and bottom plate arrangement. Here in this uh, sample, we will uh, create uh, a project for a roof is 42 uh, meters, and from here we will select the project location, and we will add a new, uh, define the delivered blade dimensions in this field, and the uh, arrangement or the setting or position of uh, the equipment, and from here we will add a roof. And we will define the uh, top inside diameter, the slope and thickness of the roof, define the bottom diameter of the roof, and from here we will use the initial condition to start the plate arrangement. You can add a mid row as an initial condition. You can make all blades center. So though this, those are, uh, uh, there are a lot of options uh, to start uh, your plate arrangement. You can flip the blade and make it vertical like this and merge rows or merge uh, plates. And from here, you will define the width of each plate like this. So you have a lot of options uh, uh, you can make it uh, to uh, to make it suits your uh, requirements. 
Uh, after that, you will define the orientation of the first building line at the top. After that, we will save the information of the arrangement. Okay, here we, we can uh, make the plate on the left side, right side. After saving, we will start creating the model on Autodesk and Newton. Configure that all data shall be created automatically. The assembly uh, will start it automatically. Right here, you can figure that all plates are assembled in one time. Okay, and in the bill of material, you can figure that all bill of material for this roof with the definition of each plate and the weight of each plate will appear on uh, your bill of material automatically. The nesting tool. Uh, the nesting tool in Autodesk. Uh, it's a very important tool. You can use it to make a listing for all plates in your uh, project. So you can imagine how you can save from your uh, time and money when you will use a tool like this. If you have different projects and uh, uh, certain plates, you can uh, uh, make a listing for all plates of your project to get the required number or the actual required number for four plates. Here we have an example. For this uh, tank, we will make a listing for the uh, annular plates. We will open the assembly of the annular plates and by using the nesting tool, we will send those items to the nesting tool. And from here, this nesting tool will detect the material for each element and the sickness for each element. And automatically, it will detect if there is any difference. So it will separate them, or they are identical in material and thickness. So they will be in one plate. Here, we will define the delivered plate dimensions and start the nesting study. Automatically, the nesting study will not take a minute. After that, you will get a nesting for this. We have 12 elements, and we will need three sheet plates like this. And you can see the efficiency of using the sheet plates. We will do the same for the bottom. We will open the uh, sheet metal flat pattern for the bottom, and we will make a listing for the bottom by using the same tool. We will select the assembly. And from the drop down list, we will select the create listing. OK, now in this uh, stage, the nesting tool will detect the material and thickness for each plate to decide if it will be the same plate or it will be separate, if it's have a different material or a different thickness. Now we will start the uh, nesting uh, study. Okay. From here, after defining the delivered blade dimensions, now we have 18 uh, plates and we need 12 sheet plates to make uh, to create uh, the nesting for this and the efficiency of the, uh, this process is appearing and you can uh, generate a report include all of those information for all items and sketch for each uh, nesting plate so we'll save this nesting and from here that's the nesting report Okay, now uh, those are the elements right here. Okay, regarding to the heat exchangers, there is an integration tool in SE software. This integration tool deals with the exported CSV file from HTRI. So by importing this file, you can get all information about the tube sheet hole. So it's automatically converted to SEG and you can generate the tube pattern and uh, tie rod, uh, ceiling rod, sliding bars, baffles automatically by using this tool. So what is happen if you have an HTRI file or you have an old equipment, uh, you wanted to make a current pool pattern? We have a tool in SEG. By using this tool, you can make your own pool pattern. So you can select the tube pattern layout 
and select the position of the tube packer, select the number of pass partitions, and by using this tool, you can generate the tube pattern and fire of pattern. And this is a small video. Here we will define the inside diameter of the heat exchanger, the thickness, the tube clearance, tube diameter, and tube OD. And from here, we will select the pass partition uh, number and shape. And from holes, we will make all holes in the right and left side are symmetric, and the same for top and bottom. Select the tube holding pattern and the big point if you wanted to make the big point to the center of the vessel. And from here, we will click draw. Now you have the pass partition. If we go to the uh, tube buses, you can figure that the number of the tube buses is different uh, in each room. So you can move the pass partition up and down, and you can figure here after moving the pass partition, the number of uh, of tubes in each room become near 174 and the other 194. Now you can convert a tube to ceiling rod or tie rod. And by selecting the symmetrical vertical and horizontal option, if you select any tube, it will be uh, uh, automatically selected on the four quarters like this. Okay. Another uh, more important option <clears throat> in SEG software, which is automated bill of material. You can get an automated bill of material by using SEG software, and you can export this bill of material in Excel format. And you can make a, a material cost report, report for your equipment by defining the cost of uh, the material per ton. And you can export this report in HTML format. Another tool in SEG, which is a nozzle opening. By using this tool, you can create all nozzle opening in your equipment. So you can uh, make a clearance between the nozzle and the nozzle cap. If you wanted to make them all equal, you can do that. And if you wanted to specify a clearance for each nozzle separately, you have the ability to use that. Another tool in SEG, which is the uh, sheet metal flat pattern, in this tool, you can convert all sheet plates to a sheet metal flat pattern, and you have the ability to export it in DWG and the DXF format. You have the ability to export the 3D model and the 2D drawings in many different extensions. You can convert it to AutoCAD DWG or Step IDIS SAT. You can convert it to CATIA Art or CATIA Product. Many, many different extensions. Now we'll talk about the drawings. You have the ability to generate the general arrangement drawing. You have the ability to generate a sub uh, simply drawing. You have the ability to make a detailed drawing. In each drawing of those, you have the ability to add a lot of tables, like bill of material table, design data. You have the ability to add nodes, flange table. All of those tables shall be created automatically. You just select it. That, uh, and say, I wanted to make it appear in my draw. For example, let's talk about the nozzle table. And the nozzle table, it includes around 21 fields, like the <clears throat> tag of the vessel, the surface of the vessel, size, outside diameter, thickness, pipe schedule, inside and uh, internal projection, external projection, and more information regarding to the welding and attachment. <clears throat> Sorry. Here on the drawing, you have the ability to select the template drawing, which you will use it to start your project. So it's easy to select your template drawing and add it to the library of SDG. You have a, a rich library for welding details. <clears throat> From this library, you will select the standard welding detail that you want to make it appear on your drawing. Here, we will talk about the integration tool in SEG with BVLet. Here we have the 3D model or the design model uh, on BVLet. So we will export the access database file for this model from the BVLet. After that, we will import this access file to the SEG software. And we will get the 3D model of this equipment 
on the CAD software. After that, by using SEG, we will generate this, uh, the detailed drawings, the uh, general arrangement of the vessel and develop material. Okay, someone can ask me, so what is the difference between SEG integration tool with BVLet and the BVLet Inventor plugin? So let's discuss this. What about the features inside Elements? In SEG software, uh, you can, or SEG can generate a detailed tree for each element. So you can uh, get the inform all information about the feature, how it's created, like extrude, revolve, sweep, all of those features. But in BVL and then to plugin, it's just a solid, it's just a block. You haven't the ability to make any change or know how it's created. The second point is a sheet metal line. In SEG software, uh, all sheet plates will be created from sheet metal items. So you have the ability to get the sheet metal flat pattern, but in BD Elite Inventor plugin, it's not an option because it's a solid, it's just a block as we discussed in the first part. The third point is customization of elements. In SEG, you have the ability to make a customization and we will discuss this point in detail when we uh, import uh, or in our demo. But in the Elite Inventory plugin, you have the ability to make a customization in your elements. The fourth point, which is changes for, from revision to another revision. Let's say your client makes some changes, like changes size of the nozzle, changes the rating of the nozzle, changes the location, orientation, all of that. By using SEG, you can make those modifications easily. But in BV Elite Inventor plugin, it's not an option. You will need to generate the 3D model again and start your process from the beginning and create your drawings from scratch. Again, this point, which is the ability to add more attachments. By using SEG software, you have the ability to add more attachments to your equipment, like name plates, lifting lugs, platform supports a lot of a lot of attachments but in bb edit plugin you have the ability to do that even you will make it manually so you will draw your parts and make your assembly and assemble it manually the drawing automation by using seg you have the ability to make automation for your drawings you can have the ability to export tables to your drawing and arrangement arrange your drawing automatically but in BV Elite Inventor Plugin, it's not an option. The last point, what's happened if you haven't a BV Elite file? In SEG, if you haven't a BV Elite file, you have the ability to create your model from scratch. You have the ability to add your items like head, shell, nozzles, support saddles, skirts, all of that. You, can, you have the ability to add it because you have a library. But in BV Elite Inventor Plugin, if you haven't an Inventor file, you have the ability to create the 3D model. Here in our demo, we will, we will make this vessel, inshallah, by using SPG. And from here, you can export the access database file from the BVL by click on the access uh, database button to export the access database. Okay, now let's start our model. That's SEG, and from here we will click new, and we will let's generate a new project, BD demo, and let's just select the location of the project, and we will select the overall from here. Okay, you can make horizontal vessel, vertical, heat exchanger, duct, tanks, and body. Let's select overall. Okay, and from here we will make a rename for this vessel. Okay, now we will select this vessel and from setting, we will open the equipment setting. And the equipment setting, you can change the position of the vessel and the direction of the assembly, but we'll leave, we will leave this uh, point for the uh, access file. And from here, you can change the little blade dimensions because those dimensions shall be used as we discussed before for the uh, shell blades. You can change your units and 
define the service of the equipment and serial number. Let's click Save. And from App Setting, we will make all elements appear during the creation. And from here, you can change the zooming option. And if you wanted to make your uh, units in fraction and select the fraction value, if you wanted to make it in decimal, a lot of options here, like the nozzle, if you want to make it appear on DIN or NBS, and the sorting number, and click Save. Now we will import the access file. So from import, here we will select import, import access file. And your file should be in millimeter, and all nozzles should be in NC Imperial. Now we will import the access file. So from here, we will select the access database file and click import. Now, it's easy to detect that this vessel is a horizontal vessel. So we will click save. And from here, it's automatically detect that the length of the shell in the access file is larger than three meters. So it's easy to divide them to two plates. And you can make a modification for the longitudinal building line orientation. Here, let's make it 60 and click save. And from here, we will select the saddle shape. Here you have different shapes or configuration of saddles, so you can select the suitable shape and click Save. Now you can figure that automatically the tree is generated automatically. If we click on this node, for example, you can figure that we have an ellipsoidal head, and those are the dimensions that we get from the uh, access file. Let's select the last head and flip the direction of head to make the convex to outside, not the inside. And we will select the vessel from here. And from here, we will save all information that we get it from the access file. This is the take seconds or minutes. It depends on the number of nodes on the tree. So after clicking on saving the tree, and as we said, this uh, step, save all data, which imported from the access file. Now we will click on the assembly, and we will click on the start button to start sending the information to the CAD software, which is in this case Autodesk Inventor. For example, here we will start making an elliptical head with those data. So if we come back to the inventor right here, we can figure that this head is generated now on Autodesk Inventor. And now the other element, which is the nozzle. So we will generate the second nozzle with those information. After this nozzle, we will generate the flange and other. So during this, we will discuss a point regarding to the customization of your elements. Here, for example, after importing the data and the creation of the vessel, we will have a saddle. And this saddle, we need to make a customization on the configuration of the saddle to suit our fabrication requirements and our client space. So you can figure here, we have a four main shapes of the saddle. It will cover all of your requirements. For each one of those, you have many different cases. By using this mix, you can generate any shape you want. For example, for the first vessel, the web shape is straight, and you can make it narrow or straight at the bottom, or make it narrow or wide from the bottom. You can make the web. You can make the web to the right side, or the mid side, or the left side. The second shape. The whip with straight edge, and this straight edge is going to the center of the vessel. So you can make the whip at the bottom with a straight side, or narrow or wide like this. And the whip itself, you can make it on the right side, or left side, or in the middle. The third shape, the straight edges of the whip is coming down to the bottom. And the same, you can make the same options for the whip bottom. The last shape, which is the saddle with lifting legs, you can make it and the same option for the whip width at the bottom. More options on the saddle, like you can make a cut on the whip. In this case, in some specifications, uh, you need to make a cut on the whip to suit the uh, anchor pole to tighten. You can make a slot holes. You can make the saddle without holes. You can make all whole pattern in two sides only, not with the longitudinal dimension. You can add up to nine ribs to your saddle. 
So let's come back to the model here and the uh, 3D model of the equipment still generated here. Okay. And here and still generated. Let's go back to another customization like lifting lights. In SEG software, we have uh, nine types of lifting lights. In each one of those, you have many options. So you can, by those types, you can cover around 95% from cases and uh, lifting lights. We have different types of onions. For the first type of lifting lug, in this case, you can make this type of lifting lug for longitudinal direction, like below here, and you can control the location of the hole from the edge. So you can control dimension in to move the hole and make the offset of this hole. That shape for the uh, circumference direction, so it is different from the first one, the first one in the longitudinal direction, and you have the same option for the dimension E. This shape is a common shape for lifting legs, so you can use this shape. The fourth shape for this lifting leg is actually used for larger vessels and large weights. Uh, one of the most common shapes for a uh, lifting lug for vertical wheels, and this type of lifting lug, you have many different uh, options, like make the lifting lug at the top with a fillet or with a chamfer, and from the bottom, you can make it with a cut or without, or make this cut with a fillet. In, in each uh, type of those lifting lugs, you have the ability to add a wheel plate, uh, you have the ability to add a cooler or not, so it's an optional just a checkbox, you will select it to generate it. Okay, those types. And uh, that's one of the most common lifting lug shapes. The last one of lifting lug, which is the cross direction. This is actually used for large bristle vessels, and the lifting point is single lifting point. So this type is, is really common in larger vessels. Regarding to the transients, uh, the options of the trunnion gives you uh, flexibility to change the trunnion shape. You can make it from pipe, from, from plate. The inside ring, you can make one ring, two rings, or without any inside ring. The same for the external rings. You can make one ring, two rings, or without any external rings. The same for the end plate. You can make trunnion with it. So the mix of all of those options gave you a lot of, a lot of cases. You can make it and cover your requirements. This type of lifting lug, with, uh, you can make it from pipe or plate, and you can control the orientation of the lifting lug. It is actually used in horizontal and vertical designs. Okay, let's come back to our model. Now we have the 3D model of the equipment is done. Okay. And now we will make some customization to the saddle, okay, to suit our fabrication requirements. And we will make two different options on uh, the two saddles. Let's uh, select the left saddle. And from here, we will remove the straight sides and change the width of the bottom uh, of the web and change the width of the base plate. And from here, we will make a whip cut and change the uh, hole offset from the short edge and the long edge. And we will make this hole as a slide hole and change the slot lens. Okay. And from here, we will select the second row to make holes in two rows and click save. Now let's click start and go back to the end. Now, if we take a look to the side view from here, you can figure that the web become narrow from bottom. The same for outside ribs. And the holes in base blade shall be a slotted holes and the width will cut. Okay, so you can change and change the configuration of the uh, support set. Let's go to the next saddle. And from here, we will remove this checkbox and change the bottom width. Okay, and from here, we will change the whole offset from the edges and make a second row. And from here, we will make the whole batter on the uh, short edge, not along the saddle. OK, 
Okay, and let's click save and click start. If we take a look from the front view, you can figure that the bottom width of the web is changing and become wide. Okay, after finishing the updating of the 3D model, we will come back to the general assembly of the model, and you can figure that the holding pattern will make it all on the edges of the short side. Now we will add some attachments to this vessel, like lifting lug to, to the shell plates. Let's come back here and select the shell. And from elements, we will select plug one. And from here, we will define the dimensions of this one. Okay. Now you have the ability to add a cooler. So if you wanted to add a cooler, just select this checkbox and define the cooler dimension. The same for weird plate, we will select it to add a weird plate. And the location. And let's click save. Now we will click start simply to send this uh, element to the CAD software here. The assembly of the lifting lug, lifting lug, the cooler, and weird plate. Now we will add another lifting lug, and we want to make it the same like this one, but we don't want it to repeat the same dimensions again by hand. So from here, we will select the shell and select lug two. But in this case, we will select make it same as lifting lug one. So we will select this a checkbox, and from here we will select. So if you select this node from the tree, you can figure that all dimensions become the same from lifting lug one. The only thing we will do, which is that change the location of the second lifting lug. And now we will click save and click start. Let's come back to the inventor. After finishing the assembly of the lifting lug, it will be automatically assembled with the general assembly of the vessel. OK. We will take a look to the bill of material of the equipment. You can figure that easily. The bill of material is generated automatically for each element and calculate the uh, required items from each element, the material and the weight for each element. So now we have 27 elements right now. Uh, and let's add a name plate for this visit. So we select shell. And from here, we will add external attachments like name plate. So we can add name plate. Select this one. And you have many different types. Let's select the vertical type here. And they defined the lens and width uh, height, the projection. And let's add as me nameplate the height. Let's, let's add a client nameplate. Let's click save. And from here, let's add a location. Let's make it 1,200 on the 90 degree orientation. And let's click start the assembly. OK, that's the bracket. After that, the ASME nameplate will take the right location and the same for client nameplate. Okay, let's come back to the model here and let's add a vortex breaker. Uh, let's go back uh, to the 3D model. Uh, we need to add a vortex breaker to this nozzle on the uh, doom. On the doom. So let's come back to the tree and select the bottom head from here and from elements. You can figure that we have many different attachments. We will select vortex breaker and click add. And from the vortex breaker, you can make or change the dimensions of this plate, the offset from the center line, the width, the height, the inside diameter. If you wanted to add a perpendicular plate, you, 
you can add it from here. If you wanted to add a cover plate, you can add it from here and define the thickness of this one. And let's click uh, Save. And from here, we will click Assembly to start the assembly of the vortex breaker. That's the first element. The perpendicular plate will be assembled. After that, the cover plate to the vortex breaker. After that, it will be assembled to the final model of the wizard. So let's take a section here. So from view, let's take a section. Here, we have the vortex breaker on this nozzle. Now let's add some attachments to this manual. Okay, let's add a davit and a grip and a uh, stop bolts. We will come here and from uh, the tree we will select the blind and from elements we will add a davit. Okay. And from davits you will find many types of davits. You will select the required time and define the orientation and opening direction and click save. And from here, we will add hand grip. Okay. And from here, you have the ability to change the dimensions of this hand grip. Uh, define the required number of the hand grip. We have two hand grips and define the orientation. Click save. The last thing we will add a stop bolt and view one stop. And click save. Now we will define the stud dimensions. And click save. Now we will start the assembly. The first element in the tree, we need to create it. It's the DAV. So the information of this standard data will be uh, sent to inventor and create. And you can imagine that uh, an engineer. Uh, instead of you make this in uh, your machine because uh, SEG deals with the CAD software and make it open a new part and select a plane can hit a sketch and make that feature like extrude or revolve or sweep instead of you and you can imagine how much time uh, you will consume if you make it by hand but here SEG make all of that instead of you you just click a button and select the elements that you wanted to create. After that, send it to the CAD software. And after that, you will have the ability to see your model in uh, 3D uh, without uh, spending more time. So you can save a lot of time, a lot of money in case of using SDG software. Now, we create the 3D model of this vessel. And now we will start creating the drone. So we will select the vessel, and from here we will select drawing, and from here drawing, from this dialog box we will select the size of the drawing, and let's select it as A1. And from here we will make two views. Okay, and let's add another view. Okay, and the spacing between views. And from here, we will make the elevation view to a lift view. And from here, we will change the, define the location of the first view, define the scale of the vessel on the drawing. And from here, we will select the required the table that we need to export it to the drawing, like bill of material, design data, flange table, the nozzle table. If you have a fitting or gasket or something like that, and you want to export the drone to the drone, just select the checkbox. From here, the notes, you, you have some standard notes. You have the ability to edit it if you want, or delete it. Uh, you have the ability to add another notes. For example, if you wanted to add something like that, just to have the ability. If you wanted to edit or delete, just select the row and delete. From here, you have a rich library of welding, standard welding details. You will just select the required welding detail from this form. After that, you will click Save. From here, you have the ability to add a client document list, like uh, the, uh, the uh, mechanical data sheet, 
thermal data sheet, any other uh, uh, documents from your client, and if you wanted to add to your drawing, the visual document like your mechanical calculation, your thermal calculation, uh, other detailed drawings and general arrangements, you can add it from here. The last thing we will define the drawing name. It's a general arrangement and it's IDW001, for example. And from here, we will define that that's the very revision. So we will make it revision zero. It's issued for review, done by A, checked by B, approved by C. Here, Let's delete this and let's add another empty rows like this if you wanted to add. And let's click save. And from uh, create drawing, let's create the general arrangement drawing for this result. You can figure that the size of the drawing is changing automatically. The revision table updated and it takes the place, uh, takes the right place on the drawing automatically. The bill of material is the same design data, the nodes, and the nozzle table, all of that in seconds. Flange table, the client document list table, vessel document list. After that, the building details shall be imported to the drawing automatically. Those are the standard building details that you are selecting from the drawing. Now we will make the annotations and dimensions for our model. So let's make the town line for this head, the same for this one, the same for that, and here. And some central lines. Okay, add some central lines for those nozzles, the lifting legs, and the manway. Now we will add the reference point, which we will measure from it. So we will use this point as a reference point, and now let's add the location for nozzles, and let's click continue. Now we have both location and let's add the same for this model right here. And let's move this one a little bit down. Let's hide this origin point and let's add the lenses or plates. The same for here. for the external projection, and the same for this nozzle, and the projection for this one, for example. Here, let's make this as a straight flash. Let's add the inside diameter, the thickness. Let's make it straight flange. And we will copy those properties to that one and that one. And for this one, we will make it thickness. And that one is ID. Okay, let's add the 10 to 10 lens. Okay, now let, let's add some nozzle tags. So let's select this nozzle, and from here we'll select parts only. And now you can get the nozzle tag automatically. The same for this one, and the same for the other nozzles. If you wanted to add a lifting lock, for example, just select it, and from here, select. Like this. Okay. 
Now we want to add a definition for each element, like the BART number in the bullet material. At this step, we need to update the item number. So we will go back to the model. And from the assembly tab, we will select update item. By clicking on this button, we open the bullet material here. Sorry, if we open the bullet material here, you can figure that uh, each identical elements shall be accumulated with each other. Like for uh, item number 17, for example, it's the cool one. So this is detected that there are four items are identical. So this number, which is 17, will be sent or will be updated to each element in inventory. So to reflect that on your drawing, you should uh, make the step of uh, update item number before uh, uh, add the balloon of the item number on your drawing. Let's draw this and let's come back here. It's still updated. It uh, takes a minute or two minutes to uh, to be done. It depends on the uh, number of elements inside your node. Now it's it's done. So if we come back and select the balloon, for example, and select the item number of, of the balloon and select this one. Okay, this item is item number one. So if we come back here, item number one is an ellipsoidal head, and that's the definition of this head. We have two heads. So if we select the second head, for example, it's item number one. We select this head, it's item number two. If we check it on the bullet material, item number two is an ellipsoidal head, and that's the definition of this head. Now we will discuss another point regarding to the customization. Now, for this nozzle, for example, we need to modify the projection of this piece. In SEG software, we will come back and select this nozzle. And from here, we will select the calculator button and define the projection. We need to make this projection as 650. So let's come here and make it 650 and click uh, one minute. It's measured here from the tan line. But here in this form, it's measured from the weld line, the seam line. Okay, so the value from the seam line will be 650. So if we click calculate on this button, it will be automatically calculate the required the calculated uh, the calculated projection of the email. We click save and click start the assembly. This nozzle projection will be changed. Okay, and if we come back to the drawing and check if this is changed or not, you can figure that the value is changed. We measured it to be 650 from the seam line. Okay, sorry, let's change the measure point from the facing. So it's 650 from the facing of times. The same we will do it with the manway. For example, we will measure from the facing of the manway to the center of the vessel, and we need to modify this to make it 1,100. So we will come back to the manway nozzle, and from the calculator, we will define this to be 1,100. Just to click calculate to calculate the projection of the nozzle, and click save. One more option regarding uh, to the welding, set welding detail. Here, you can define the welding detail or the fillet weld for the nozzle from this dialog box and you have the ability to define that nozzle service from here so for example you can make it as a man way and if we click save and come back to the tables and open the nozzle table if we take a look to nozzle m01 now the service of this nozzle is a change during importing the information from the access file you have the ability or on the uh, uh, dv file itself no service uh, uh, for the nozzle, no place to enter the service on the nozzle. And right here, the welding detail automatically calculated and the values of the welding that you enter, the external projection of the nozzle is calculated automatically. Now let's make a detail for the saddle. Let's select the saddle and right click. And from here we will select drawing, 
select the drawing size, select the views that we need to create it, and from here we will select front view and make the location to be of the drawing like this, and the scale is 14. And from here we will add a bill of material only. We will remove the building and nodes. And from here we will add automated dimension to the drawing. So we will select dimensions and select two point distance dimension. And from here, let's add a revision table, saddle detail, and IDW. View is zero to, for example, and let's click create. Here, you can figure that the views of the saddle are done with the dimensions. But you can figure that all dimensions are, a lot of dimensions are uh, done and added to this view. And this make a conflict. So you can make delete not required dimensions like this. It's an option. Or you can create your drawing without automated dimension. So it's repeated without dimension. So it's create drawing. Let's delete the current drawing and from annotations, let's remove the dimensions and let's start the drawing again without any dimensions. Here we can make a section, for example, for the shadow, like this. And if we want to make a detail for the holding, for example, like this, and make the scale to five, and define the dimension of the slot hole, like this. Okay, the same for the other, and if you want to make automated center lines, just select this and click K2 and automate center lines. Now, after generating the 3D model for the support saddle and uh, the uh, general arrangement of drawing of the vessel, and how we can get the automated bill of material and exporting it to the Excel format, the same for models, table, and a lot of tables, other tables, we will start a new uh, project. And in this project, we will create a uh, uh, storage tank, small storage tank. So from here, we will add a new equipment. Let's add tank. Okay. And let's click add. And from here, we will accept all of our model. Okay. And let's delete this equipment. And from here, we will select this equipment. And from the setting tab, we will define the position of the vessel. It's a storage tank, so it will be a vertical. And we will start the arrangement from the bottom to top direction. We will define the delivered blade dimensions. We will define the uh, units. And let's click Save from here. And for elements, let's add an annular plate. From the annular plate, we will define, we have many different types. Annular plate uh, with equal uh, pieces or annular plate with different VCs, so you have the ability to control the arc length for each one. Annular plates with different VCs and the thicknesses, so you can control each thickness of each plate. Uh, now let's define the inside diameter of the annular plates, define the thickness of the first course, the annular plate thickness, the projection of the annular plate, the straight edge of the dimension W, the bottom thickness, and the longitudinal bending line orientation, and the number of signals. Now we will click Save and start the assembly. Here, the assembly started, and the arrangement of the annular plates will start automatically. Now we will go to the next step, which is uh, generating the bottom plate. So from here, we will select the tank and we will go to the element tab. Okay. And from the element tab, we will uh, select the uh, arranged slope bottom. You can make it a uh, flat bottom. 
we will make it as a slope. So we will create this bottom plate. And from here, select its slope the tool inside or the outside like this. Define the bottom thickness, the overlap, and the uh, bottom uh, diameter of the this plate. OK. Define the material. Define the slope of this bottom, the cut torch lens. And from here, we will click Save and open the update tool. From here, you can figure that we have some initial conditions. Like, if you wanted to add a mid row, just to select this one and row blades. So you will get this. If this arrangement does not suit your requirements, just make set grid and just it without that. In this case, you haven't a mid plate. If you wanted to make a change for, for example, make offset for this one, just define the offset value, for example, and make it like this. So you have the ability to change the uh, initial conditions to start your modeling like this case and change the orientation. Let's make it at zero and click save. Now let's start the assembly. Now the blades of the bottom of the tank start assembly with all information like the overlap, and uh, the same arrangement that you selected from the uh, uh, from the module of plate uh, arrangement. After finished, it will be assembled automatically to the analog plate. Now we will add some shell plates to this model. From the tank here, we will add shell. Can one, and from can one, you can figure that we have many different types. We will select a shell from different pieces and thicknesses. In this type, you have the ability to define the length of each blade and the thickness of each blade in this shell course. We will define the inside diameter, the course height, the main thickness of the course, the gap of the bulb, the number of courses, and from here we will define the length of the first course and the start orientation angle, for example, and click update. OK, so we will define the thickness of each plate, measure, 12, 12, and let's make this one at 16 and the last one at 12. OK, for example, it's just an example. Now we will click uh, update red and save. Now we will add another can. So let's add another can and two. But in this case, we will not select the different thicknesses. It's just from different pieces, but the same thicknesses. Define the inside diameter, the thickness of this shell course, the number of segments, define the length of first course, the first orientation angle of this course, click update and click save. Now we will add another. Shell course can three, and let's make it looks like can two, but we will change only the thickness. So from here, we will select can three, and we will change the thickness and start angle. Click update and click save. Let's add another course can four, and let's make it looks like can three, and click add. But we will change the thickness, make it six millimeters, and the start angle is zero degree. Click update and click save. Now let's click start to start creating the shell course. Now the blade arrangement will start according to your selection, and you can figure that uh, here in this one, the uh, blade with a different thickness takes a different color to show you that this plate uh, with a different thickness. Uh, you can use this option actually uh, in uh, clean outdoors. So because this is uh, a piece fabricated separately and after that it will be assembled with the storage tank. And the shell plate uh, actually uh, made from a different thickness. 
because it have a large opening for the clean outdoors. So you will replace this uh, cut with a more thickness on the shell. Here that's the third can. It's assembled and will be added to the final model of the tank. The last shell course. After that, inshallah, we will add the compression ring and we add a roof and some attachments to this tank, like uh, a clean outdoor and roof plate cover. I think we have uh, 10 minutes remaining in this session. Now we will come back to the model and from tank, we will select compression ring. So we will select this one. We will add a compression ring, and from this compression ring, we you have the ability to select the shape of the compression ring. We will select the detail D according to the API and define the inside diameter of the compression ring. Select the size of the angle and click save. Now we will add a roof. So from elements, we will add a ranged roof, and from here. We will define the side diameter, the slope, the thickness of the roof, the overlap, and the inside diameter of this one. Okay, the uh, cut thickness of the roof, and from here it changes the scale, save, and delete your updates. Let's make it with a mid row like this. And if you want to move this plate a little bit or make it offset. Just to select this one, and let's define it to be possible to millimeter, for example. So you have this shape. And if you wanted to rotate or split something like that, for example, if you wanted to split this one to right like this and make it this one as centered, for example, so you can make an option with this one. And if you wanted to make a thick grid and rearrange your model again like this. So you have many different cases you can select between them. Let's reset grid and row plates like this with a mid row and make this one with the offset and change the orientation. Let's make it 45 degrees and click save. Now we will click start assembly to start creating the compression ring. After that, the row plate arrangement. The same for the bottom. Uh, well done. Will be done on the uh, roof. Each blade you created here, it will be created on the CAD software. Okay, so it's created here. Okay, after creation, it will be assembled to the final model. After that, we will add a clean outdoor to the shell plates and add a cover to the, uh, uh, to the roof. Now, as we, as we discussed here, you can figure that this plate with a different thickness, this one right here. And let's add a clean outdoor to this shell. So let's select this shell. And from here, let's add clean outdoor. Okay, and from here select the uh, the shape of the this one. Let's move this from here, and you can select the configuration of the davit. So you can select between those types. Just select the required type, select the size, and select the orientation. Let's make it 45 degrees, for example, and click save. Define the set world. Click save and now let's click start assembly to start creating the runway uh, or the uh, clean outdoor. Here that's the neck plate. Okay, after that the uh, rebag flange, the flange is uh, fabricated from two pieces, one around the neck and the other at the bottom. After that the gasket and the casual plate 
So you can figure that the uh, assembly of each element done automatically instead of you. So it's you can imagine how much time you will save. Here are the stud balls or the balls, the nuts. And finally, the dabbled. After finishing, it will be added to the final assembly. And anytime you want to make a change or something like that, you have the ability to do it easily by using SDG software. If you want to change the size, for example, change the type, just go back to the node and change your information here and send it back to inventory. Let's add an anchor chair from here. And from this dialog box, let's add a wheel plate and keep those dimensions and make them eight uh, pieces and uh, change the orientation of the first one. Let's make it on five degrees, for example, and click save now. Let's click start. So the anchor chair will be generated and assembled automatically. After that, it will be add to the model and the pattern. Okay, a circular pattern for this one around the tank. And easily, you can detect if you have any flash or something like that. So you can decide if you wanted to rotate uh, or change the orientation, change the number of the conical bolts around the tank or not. Uh, I think uh, now we cover all uh, of, uh, points uh, in this session. And if, uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead. Hello, Fabzan. Hello. Fawzan, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Mr. Ahmed. Yes. Yeah, Deepak this side. Hello? Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, but uh, the voice is a little bit uh, not clear. Sabin, can you speak? So, any questions uh, in this uh, session after uh, making a complete model from BV Elite? After that, make a customization on these saddles. Uh, add uh, another attachments like vortex breaker, lifting lugs, David grab bolts to the manway, adding nameplate. After that, we make a general arrangement drawing for the uh, whole vessel, with including uh, many tables like bill of material table, notes, design data, nozzle table, flange table. After that, we make a detailed drawing for the saddle with automated dimension if you would like. And if you would like to add uh, dimensions by hand, you can make it. Uh, after that, we make a storage tank, small storage tank, uh, including uh, annular plates, bottom plates, wood plates, chill plates, uh, arrangement, anchor, uh, chair, and clean outdoor. So any questions regarding to the above points? We have several questions, okay. Uh, okay. But what I am thinking is that uh, can we uh, answer all these questions offline? It means after the the meetings, because uh, we are go to, going with the go to meeting. So after the the, the uh, webinar, okay, we will consult all these questions and we can okay. uh, reply positively. Okay, inshallah. I will wait all okay. of your questions and you will uh, uh, get a reply uh, soon, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, we'll arrange the questions and uh, we can reply uh, one by one to all the participants. Inshallah. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ahmad.
So thank I you, think we can we'll close time. this session uh, now. I hope, I hope this uh, session or this webinar cover uh, your uh, uh, imagination about uh, this software. Actually, uh, this software is amazing. It's uh, a unique software. No existing software can do all of that under one umbrella. You can make pressure vessels, towers, heat exchangers, and storage tanks, slug catchers, launchers, and the receivers, all of that under one umbrella. No existing software in the world can do that. So we can okay, so close this. Yes, so we can close this session now. And what are okay. the questions are there? We'll go and uh, we can reply one by one to all the okay. participants. Okay, thank you for your time uh, and in, uh, waiting for your questions, inshallah. Uh, you can close from your side, yes. You can close okay. from your side, sir.